What if there was a podcast that did it all? Sports, politics, world events. Well, that's what we've got. You're listening to CNC Talks. Hi, I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. And you're listening to the very first episode of the CNC Talks podcast. We release every Tuesday and we tape a day early, so it is currently Monday, May 2nd of 2022 at around 12 p.m. Pacific time. Every week we discuss politics, world events, and sports. Donald Trump was banned from Twitter after the inciting insurrection and repeated lies about the election. He was banned in mid-January after the January 6th insurrection. Uh, he claimed last week that he does not want to be invited back on the platform, that he instead wishes to stick to the platform that he created that launched in February, uh, Truth Social, which as of right now is actually number one on the App Store. It, this is after a very rocky launch, to say the least. Um, Devin Nunes, the former Republican congressman, uh, chair of the House Intelligence Committee for a while, uh, resigned his seat from Congress in order to become the CEO of the company. It did not work out too well. Um, Trump posted the day that it was created. He then waited about two months before posting his second, they call them truths. Uh, this was just saying, I'm back. It was pretty much his second one. That was last week. Well, there was some worry about some, one of the five potentially jumping over to Robert's uh, concurrence that seems likely was written and which would mean that there would not be enough votes to fully overturn Roe. Ah. So let's get to some of the effects of what this would do if it was to go through. Uh, yeah, so 20 states have trigger laws. Now, what a trigger law is, means that it's like as, the, as soon as the court actually comes out with the opinion, uh, then the total or partial bans will take effect, um, could potentially have no exceptions for rape, incest, or even life of the mother, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and Republicans have stated that they will try to get a national ban if they take back the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the White House. Yeah, there's other also potential cases that could be threatened regarding uh, right to privacy and all, like things like contraception, gay sex, and gay marriage, and uh, interracial marriage. So, um... I would like to introduce uh, Sylvie, our guest today. Hi. Yeah, all right. Uh, Sylvie is a uh, close friend of ours. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you. So right. we would like to get your your opinion on this, and Colin has a couple of quotes for you from s some politicians that we would yeah. like your reaction to. Yeah, let's just start out. Uh, what's your quick uh, quick reaction to it? You've had about a week uh, since this case come in, came in. Yeah, I think um, initially when I first saw it, I'm in the female student union at our school, and um, there was a, I got sent the, the political article, and I looked at it, and I had a hard time, because it made me feel sick, made me feel, um, and I, I knew that, that Washington, because Jay Inslee, our governor, has said, you know, we're definitely going to keep abortions legal in Washington, um, but that doesn't change anything for me. I, I don't, just because I'm not personally threatened, there are women all across the country who um, are threatened and who will have to drive across states to get an abortion because they don't have the resources, they're not ready to have children, they're, they don't have, you know, there's so many factors that could go into this. Um, yeah, that was, it was disgusting. All right, let's bring in a couple friends here. Uh, Levi and Owen to join the conversation on the NBA. All right, so I'm going to be mediating this discussion because I know that you guys have very differing opinions on this. So who, first question is, from the first round, who is to blame for the Nets getting eliminated in the first round? Um, I think Kyrie Irving did his thing. I mean, <laughs> it, might have, it might have caused a little bit of chemistry issues and some other stuff, but... Yeah. He really carried them through that. I think Kevin Durant kind of stole, but I think the I think, yeah, you know, he kind of stole. And in the House this week, the Republicans have attempted to shoot down four different bills this week. The bills are money to address the baby formula shortage, which was voted no on by 192 Republicans. 
The bill to ensure that families in need can buy baby formula was voted no by nine Republicans. The bill to crack down on gas price gouging was voted no by every Republican. And domestic terrorism prevention was voted no by 203 Republicans. Which is all of them but one. And Herschel Walker won the Republican primary. He is a former football player, and he is also endorsed by Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell. He, however, does have some domestic violence issues and seems to be completely incoherent. We yeah. actually have a clip of that. Yeah, this is a speech on gun control. Let's play that. See, there is a person wielding that weapon. You know, Cain, Kia, Abel. You know, and, uh, you know, and that's the problem that we have. And I said, what we need to do is look into how we can stop those things. You know, he talked about doing a disinformation. What about getting a department that can look at young men that's looking at uh, women that are looking at uh, just social media? What about doing that, looking into things like that, and we can stop that that way? But yet they want to just continue to talk about taking away your constitutional rights. And, and I, I think there's more things we need to look into. This has been happening for years, and the way we stop it, by putting money into the mental health field, by putting money into uh, other departments rather than departments that want to take away your rights. And since the Uvalde attack last week, there have been either 11 or 12, I've heard at different least. sources, at least 11 or 12 more mass shootings in just a one week. There have been about 220 mass shootings already in 2022. That's an average of, of, of about one and a half shootings a day. So we have a guest to talk about what needs to be done uh, going forward and just hear his reaction. Uh, his name's Scott. He's a ninth grade teacher here at the Northwest School. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Colin. Hi, Charlie. Hello. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, let's just kind of get your reaction to uh, what happened and the fact that there's just so many shootings, especially in schools all around the country. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a topic that is so um, emotional and, and close to home for those of us who've committed our professional lives to education, that it's hard to even know where to start to, um, to a question like that, like how can you respond to the unimaginable? And um, so I think if you talk to a lot of teachers, there is, especially uh, in the first you know, weeks after these events, a degree of inability to really even know how to start uh, the conversation. I know that I find myself in this position where I feel the need to um, have these events addressed in the classroom, but I'm not always prepared emotionally to uh, confront them myself. The Philadelphia Phillies fired manager Joe Girardi. Uh, the Phillies were 22 and 29 at the time of the firing, and they are expected to be a contender. They've actually won every game since then, though. They have. Although they were playing the Angels, so which who have lost, who 11, lost 11 straight, 11 straight. Games. They're now under 500, and the road ahead for them does not get better. In the last week, five members of the Proud Boys have been charged with seditious conspiracy. That is a major charge, could carry a lot of time in prison. The Proud Boys are a, a white supremacist group. They actually hired a cameraman to go with the, um, like the Capitol, which is really stupid, honestly, to have somebody document your crimes. They're just proving that they did something illegal. Yeah, so... Like you said, many states around the um, country, about 20, uh, will quickly move to outlaw abortion. Some states already have, um, mostly southern states like Texas, Mississippi, um, um, Oklahoma, a whole ton of other ones, though, also. The GOP also, several um, GOP members of Congress have stated that they will try to impose a national abortion ban if they get back control of uh, the White House, Senate, and House in 2024. Um, the Formula One British Grand Prix was this weekend. It was a, um, another race that had a, uh, it rained for part of qualifying. And uh, the chaos really started on lap one with Pierre Gasly trying to uh, split uh, the two cars of George Russell and Guan Yu Zhou, which ended with Albon, uh, Russell and Guan Yu Zhou all out of the race. And actually, Zhou had a terrible accident where he flipped into the catch fence. Luckily, everyone everyone was okay. 
No one was hurt, but it was a very scary incident. And also, Anthony Fauci uh, has announced his retirement. He will retire sometime in 2024. He is the country's top infectious disease expert. He has served every president since Reagan. And he was attacked by Trump and his supporters for his advice on COVID-19. Yeah, and he just had like an absolutely legendary career uh, in Washington. Um, and has done some fanta- uh, phenomenal things with um, public health. The separation of church and state and the fact that it is quite honestly, under attack on the right. Um, well, with the Republican Congresswomen, uh, Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, very much QAnon Congresswomen. They have made comments recently that have just clearly opposed that right. For example, Boebert said, the church is supposed to direct government, not the opposite way. The church is supposed to influence government. The Bible says that government rests on God's shoulders. And that is... That is an anti-constitutional view. Uh, Arguably the biggest story this this week from politics is the raiding of Mar-a-Lago by the FBI. Mar-a-Lago, of course, is uh, Trump's residence. It's a golf course and resort in Florida. Uh, It's related to the investigation of Trump into stealing documents from the White House. A judge found that there was a probable cause to sign off on the search warrant into an investigation for espionage by Trump. Uh, Boxes of highly classified documents were recovered, including nuclear secrets. In other news uh, with Trump, he is suing the U.S. government for the raid of Mar-a-Lago. Why is that, Con? Uh, I mean, there's the stated reason, which is a bunch of nonsense. And then there's the real reason, which is honestly a distraction. Right, That's the real reason. And what is this distraction from? Well, another thing that came out... um, Monday afternoon was that in the in 2022 the feds have recovered more than 300 classified documents from Mar-a-Lago that he should not have had possession of. It, uh, that's it's illegal to do that. The U.S. Open Serena Williams is playing what is likely her final tournament. Obviously, just a legendary career, 23 Grand Slams, the greatest tennis player. To ever play the sport. Um, she won her first round match Monday. Second round match was tonight against um, Annette Conervait, um, the number two ranked player in the world right now. Um, she's also going to play doubles uh, with her sister Venus Williams for the first time in several years. Russell Wilson, former Seahawks quarterback, now with the Denver Broncos, has signed a five year, $245 million contract. And this now makes him under the control of the Broncos for seven years. My thoughts on this. It is interesting to see how he will pan out. We don't really know how he will fare in that offense. He does have some pretty good weapons. And we will see how far the Broncos can make it into the playoffs and possibly even win the Super Bowl with him. We will see how that ends up panning out. A very unpopular figure had... uh a very, very bad week, and that was Steve Bannon. Yes, uh, Stephen, Steve Bannon was indicted for fraud in his We Build a Wall organization. He was indicted for the same thing federally, but was pardoned by Trump. Uh, this charge is in the New York um, State Court, and he has already been convicted federally for contempt of Congress and is awaiting sentencing. Yeah, and, and some more on this We Build a Wall. It was allegedly a charity organization. We know that one of Trump's biggest things uh, was building the wall. Of course, he never really actually did that. But so a group of people, including Steve Bannon, decided to start up a the organization where Trump supporters could donate and they would build a wall. Of course, it was actually just a massive scam. They put most of the money in their own pockets. But uh, they did actually build a small section of wall. Um, that wall's actually no longer standing because it collapsed into the Rio Grande. Uh, it was not a very well done uh, piece of wall. No. Uh, we move on. Some updates on Russia, Charlie. Uh, yes. For the for an, yet another week, the Russians continue to be pushed back by the Ukrainians, which just shows in, in actually also in another move of ungovernance in Uzbekistan. Uh, Putin met with um, President the leader of China to discuss what was going on, and clearly there were some 
difficulties in that discussion. And Russia is, is claiming that they will now use more force in the invasion, so we will see how that continues. And Trump is being sued for fraud by the New York State Attorney General. Uh, Letitia James, yep. Uh... Uh, his organization and his kids are also being sued. Allegedly for uh, inflated assets for loans and insurance, and potential bank fraud and insurance fraud as well. This lawsuit is for $250 million and would also banish Trump from doing business in New York. We know that once, when China started being blamed for COVID, there was a huge rise in anti-Asian hate here in the United States. So yes, there was. Stuff, what, what leaders say matters. I will say, it should have been 21 to 10. Mike Evans, what are you doing? Yes, yes, that is, Dropping that is correct. Dropping a wide open. He had like 10, 10 point some yards of separation between him and his closest defender. He completely dropped it. They have no momentum. And again, just like the Packers, the Buccaneers are a mess. Going into the season, we thought, can anyone stop Rodgers? It's going to be Rodgers and Brady and maybe Philly and maybe Dallas. As the and maybe teams. the Rams. And maybe L.A. L.A. has been terrible. Well, Green Bay they've, been t- they've struggled. They've showed signs of life recently, and they are coming off a bye week. So we'll see what that does for them against Green, the 49ers. Green Bay just doesn't exist anymore. They've just disappeared. The I honestly, I honestly looked, was watching the end of the Packers game, and I was thinking, all right, well, I can't imagine that the Buccaneers have done badly. I looked at the score, and I was like, all right, well, that's the end of their season. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't come back from losing to the Panthers team with no head coach, essentially no um, wide receivers, without Christian McCaffrey, and they have their third string quarterback. There's like websites where you can sign up to go outside polling places with guns and take pictures of license plates. A judge somehow ruled it legal though, which it shouldn't be. And let's not forget, in certain places, it's illegal to give water to people in line to, that are in line to vote, but it's illegal to, you know, hold guns up to them. Uh, that just feels completely wrong. The Lions, who, uh, they beat the Packers, uh, and, um, Charlie, Charlie, I'm going to let you talk more about the Packers because it's really entertaining when you do. So I'll pose this one quick question to you, which is, do they have any playoff hopes whatsoever? I was sitting on my couch. Watching, watching some of the games go by in the last two minutes, and because I, I knew I had to walk my dog, I'm sitting on my couch. I'm, wa- I'm looking, I'm watching Aaron Rodgers try to march downfield, and I'm just, I'm just thinking to myself, how is he gonna mess it up this time? And I knew, because I knew he was gonna do it. There was no way that the pa- that the Packers were actually gonna win the game, and lo and behold, they didn't win. I was right. The Lions actually did something for once, and the pan- uh, the Packers, are not gonna make the playoffs. They're done, and they're going to be dead last in the division by the end of the year. Okay, then. Um, I don't know if that's going to work out, but... The I'll Lions agree. are going to finish ahead of the Packers, and so are the Bears. You know what? I'm not even going to doubt you on it, because you're probably not wrong. Mitch McConnell was actually, I think, very correct on this, which was that the Republicans lost the Senate because of candidate quality, Right. They ran Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania against John Fetterman. Uh, That was a seat that the Republicans held. They lost that seat um, because Dr. Oz was just a terrible candidate. We've talked about him a lot on this podcast. He he was a terrible candidate, and they lost the seat. In New Hampshire, they ran Don Bolduck, who was just completely crazy. They lost that seat. They had a real chance to get a pickup in New Hampshire. They failed because of that. In Arizona, they ran Blake Masters. Another just absolutely terrible candidate. The Arizona GOP as a whole just completely in shambles right now. They ran Carrie Lake uh, for governor. Uh, those are two extreme far right people. They both lost their elections. That's they had a real chance to pick up a Senate seat in Arizona. Had a real chance to hold that governorship in Arizona. They lost them both. Democrats won. Nevada, Adam Laxalt was their Senate candidate. Real chance for a pickup there against Catherine Cortez Masto. Did not happen because Laxalt is a terrible candidate. Hey, even in Georgia, we've talked about Herschel Walker numerous times on this podcast, just uh, some real issues. That one's going to a runoff, but no matter what happens there, the Republicans will not be able to get Senate control. And Walker, let's be honest, He's not the favorite. He could still win, but it's it's an uphill battle for him. 
it really looks to me like right the new Republican majority, they just seem to be more interested in getting what I guess you could call revenge on their opponents and a bunch of grandstanding than actually governing, which is, of course, what the American people elected them to do, right? America has a lot of problems. It would be really nice if they could work to try and solve the problems. Again, they mostly ran on inflation. Uh, they have yet to put forward a plan to solve inflation. In Group B, the U.S., they tied both England and Wales, and I think that, I mean, tie, especially a 0-0 tie against England doesn't look great, but that is a good result for the U.S., right? That would, uh, that would, that would be like if England fielded an American football team and they managed to tie a team, uh, football team made up of U.S. players. How far can the Buccaneers go in the playoffs? Because it's looking more and more like they're going to get there. Well, if they, if they make it in, they're the four seed. Yep. They play the Cowboys. Uh, likely, yes. They're not going to do that. They're going to lose. To the Cowboys in the playoffs? Yes, who the Cowboys then are immediately going to choke in the next round. Okay, okay, that's fair. In the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, it's Eastern Michigan and it's San Jose State. What, what are you thinking? Okay, other than the, like, the first... 10 or 10 or 12 games. I know basically nothing about most of the schools. I'll just go San Jose State. I will also go San Jose State, although that's completely random. I don't I I don't know. Uh, I'll, the, the thing I know about that game is that it's going to be played on the blue field in Boise, Idaho, and that the trophy has potatoes in it. Is the Cheez-It Bowl trophy a Cheez-It? Uh, no, but it's like a cup that's filled with Cheez-Its, basically. Nice. Um... And the coach in that one also gets dumped with Cheez-Its. Well, I don't know if the winner of the Potato Bowl gets dumped with potatoes, but... So, so are we... Are we? Uh, does that mean the winner of the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl gets to hang out with Jimmy Kimmel? Uh, I don't know. Um, Charlie, what are your closing thoughts on 2022? And honestly, looking forward into 2023, what we can take away from this year. Uh, I think this was definitely... Uh, this was definitely... Uh, we'll be looked back on it as a very relevant year in history uh it was really be the beginning of the end uh, hopefully the beginning of the end of the covid pandemic um a lot of huge events happened in both politics um and, and um as well as sports and world events as well i am very hopeful for next year um i think i hope hopefully uh, the things that were good hope to uh, continue to improve and the things that didn't go so well uh continue to decline um i'm really looking forward to next year continuing this podcast um what are your thoughts yeah, so I agree with everything that you said. Um, I'd like to add, though, I feel like we say this, what I'm about to say, every single year, um, and then it never ends up happening. But, like, a new year should be new beginnings. And y you hope every year that finally humans can, in some ways, like, come together and instead of continuing to spread lies about the worst of each other, to believe the best in each other, to disagree in whatever we're doing and still find a way to be respectful to not shoot each other or spread lies that cause other people to shoot each other to hate each other because it's it's ridiculous and i feel like that can't continue and that we should start fresh in 2023 and of course that's not going to happen because that's not the way that the world works but yeah it, it is truly it, we I would love it if that was able to happen. Um, so, but thank you so much to everybody who um, listened to this podcast in the last year. Um, we like, we truly could not be more grateful. Um, cannot wait to see you next year. Excited to see what the new year brings. As always, find us on Twitter at CC Talks Podcast. You can check out other our other episodes at our website, cctalks.net, as well as on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can call us with your questions at 360-389-2630. We would really love to hear more from you in 2023. And, th and finally, thank you so much to our entire crew who worked so hard putting this show together, as well as all of the guests that we had on this year. So for our guests this year, Sylvie, Levi, Owen, and Scott, and our outstanding production crew of Morris, Zach, and Drake, thanks for listening this year. I'm Colin. And I'm Charlie. See you next year. Happy holidays. We will see you in 2023.